before we get going with the interview, I want to offer you a free ebook from Corporate Alliance um, about becoming more referable. Basically, it's along the lines that everybody knows word of mouth is the best form of advertising, but that there's a secret to get people to refer more business to you, and that most of us are making it unintentionally too hard for contacts to help us. So what this resource goes through is this idea of how to become 10 times more referable. You can get it for free on their website. If you go to corporatealliance.net slash ebooks, you can download it for free. Again, corporatealliance.net slash ebooks. Welcome to Leadership and People. This is a series that pulls back the curtain on leadership by interviewing CEOs, senior executives, and entrepreneurs who've had large exits. We ask these experts about how they built trusted networks to rapidly grow their companies and what advice they wish they knew if they could do it all again. And this is part two of our interview with Matt Frisbee. I can't just sit at one thing and stay there on that. And as I do these other things, they actually get me thinking differently about the thing that I started. And so I believe heavily in the subconscious being able to open new doors of the thing that you started a while ago. Matt, um, when we were finishing off part one, I was thinking, you know, the theme of, of the first half of the interview was very much about marketing advice and the approach to marketing. I'd love to go maybe a different direction with, with the second half of the interview here. Thinking about growing an agency and, and leading people so that you're not just the bottleneck and, and people are developing and you're growing your own leaders. What's, what's some of your philosophy on how to help people move beyond being technicians and become leaders? That's a great question. Leadership has uh, a different aspect of, of marketing than I think people realize, especially if you have a team. And um, some companies have small marketing teams and some companies have large. Marketing is connection into an organization with the sales team, with the product, with an executive team, often are leading the conversation, not the product or the operation, but the conversation. And so when you are as bought into the idea as the founders, it can be felt. And uh, one of my favorite ideas about leadership comes from a white Christmas. And um, there's this scene in the beginning of the movie with Bing Crosby, and they're talking about the general before the whole movie starts. And, and General Waverly, they talk about And he says, they're talking about him, man, you know, we ate and then he ate. We slept and he slept. You know, and this idea of, of committing yourself, of, of being on the line right there with, you know, your troops, et cetera. Um, being completely sold on it yourself can be felt from the whole team. And what I liked about that movie is that they knew that that, that general was out there for their best interest. And so... As a, as a marketing leader, that you understand your team's best interest, the customer's best interest, the company's best interest. It's about finding this combination of direction. And I've often tried to, to kind of crowdsource ideology or to crowdsource creativity, et cetera. And really, people in many ways need to be given direction. Where do we go? What do we do? How do we do it? And being a marketing leader is so much more important because there are capable tacticians everywhere. But capable leaders are much harder to find. The willingness to put your ideas on the line, your willingness to take a risk and say, we're going this way, right? And you're probably wrong, you know? But the failures happen more than victories. But the willingness to be able to do that, that's leadership, right? And, and then when you fail, is say, hey, I was wrong. This is what we learned, and we're going to change direction. Um, and I really think that that's missing from a lot of, of marketing teams is, is that person to do that. And I think that there's probably a greater safety in your role when you can recognize that than trying to not mess up. Um, I'm a huge Packers fan, and it's been a rough couple of years. Um, but there was one time where I saw them uh, lose their Super Bowl position. They were down by three, or they were winning by three touchdowns with like three minutes to go against the Seahawks. And man, people were calling me saying, hey, Super Bowl parties at your house, right? And we were ordering food. I mean, it was a done deal, right? You're, you're 21 points ahead with three minutes to go. The likelihood of you losing is nil. Um, the Packers played not to lose that day. And they did lose. And the Seahawks pulled it together and pulled a miracle out of thin air and went to the Super Bowl. And the look on everybody's face, the Packers' face, Aaron, everybody, was bewilderment. They, they couldn't 
imagine what had just taken place. I couldn't. My wife was pacing the floor. It was a hilarious moment. But that principle applies to leadership, is the willingness to put yourself on the line and to go for gold, right? And people will follow you. You have to, to build a good plan and stick to it and recognize that you messed up and then get back to it. So leadership is different than getting in there and, and being in your data and putting a campaign together because that's going to happen. But when people feel inspired by the leader, their deliverability, their um, authenticity to their creative process is so much more magnified. It's a super important role. Well, you know, I'm thinking about that. And, um, you know, I think that you like to me, as I hear that, I hear kind of like the ownership of leadership, like like own it right to the end. And like, you have fun. I mean, the first art show I've done in 20 years was at your company event when you invited me over to, to show <laughs> some of my it. art, right? Um, so you guys definitely have fun. But I do think that's one other thing I've learned from you is like, I think about events, you know, connecting with people. Um, uh, like you are like uh, an amazing I don't know what this isn't a word follow upper <laughs> like you, you are you are intense about follow up like not in an annoying way but like in a own it like like you keep at it and uh like you're interested in relationships and you don't just kind of like it's not a passing thing like I feel like you own that hard and you you work until you have a relationship with people and that's you know probably why your agency does millions of dollars of business but can you talk about this idea of of owning it right to the end yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good question. I, I guess it's, um, I've had this actually asked me before, um, what's your process for following up? And um, I don't know that I've ever thought about it as a process. I really think I've thought about it as more just, um, I would want that, right? If I asked somebody for something or if I said, hey, we should get together, I would want someone to come up and follow up with me and like, Hey, remember when we talked about that? Let's do it. Oh, for sure, because I forget things all the time. And um, I just, you know, I, I want to communicate to people in the way that I would want to be communicated back to. But um, I've found that when you do, you know, the things that you've committed to, uh, people are in a different, you know, headspace when they first ask you for help versus when you follow up and the things they've learned, et cetera. But um, yeah, I, I care very much about relationships. I took a test with um, StrengthsFinders 2.0. And uh, my, my top five strengths were woo. And the second one, I can't think of what it's called, um, but I'm like a, not a collector, but like I'm, I'm excellent at like bringing people together. And uh, I'm a true extrovert in that sense that I love to be around my people. And I, I bring people together that, of like mind because I enjoy it. I, I love being around people that share ideas and, and share passions. Um, then is followed by strategy and belief. I, I forget the fifth one, but that the, the idea of kind of being a collector in a way um, really stuck out to me, and I, I didn't an, anticipate that being as much of a business strength as it has become. But uh, yeah, I love people. I love you know learning from them and spending time with them, and I love talking to people. And um, so making sure that I am you know good to my commitments. That if I said, hey, I'm going to follow up with you, that I do. And uh, ensuring that I actually gave them what they were talking about. So I guess I never thought about it as a process, but um, I kind of just live that way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What about the other direction? What about like, you know, I think one of the reasons you and I get along is we kind of have like, <laughs> you know, a high energy attack on life, maybe. Right. <laughs> right. But, but, you know, I think about some of my failings of like, man, if I'm not right in front of something, it's so easy for me to procrastinate or like you know, I think about where some of those, you know, what the other side of those coins are, the weaknesses that come with the strengths. What's, mm -hmm. what's one of, what's something that you have worked to conquer about yourself or that is something you're, you're actively recognizing like, no, you know, if I'm going to be the right guy to lead this team or whatever, here's something I want to up my game on. Yeah. Um, my biggest weakness is um, like extreme focus. I, I do good in a whirlwind, and it's a really way, weird way of getting things done, but I'll start 10 things at the same time. Like I do this on Saturday in the backyard. I will pull a couple of weeds, I'll tear something down, and I, I work on them in a whirlwind, and it drives my wife absolutely nuts. Um, and so I get it done, not in the way that most people will, but 
I can't just sit at one thing and stay there on that. And as I do these other things, they actually get me thinking differently about the thing that I started. And so I believe heavily in the subconscious being able to open new doors of the thing that you started a while ago. And so like if I'm working on strategies, I'll start six at the same time and touch them as I go along and because they inspire each other. And so having this kind of, you know, uh, mosaic of things happening is actually how I'm more effective at getting done. And so I don't approach things traditionally in the way that we think of sit down and get it done, you know, be focused on this one thing. I'm able to focus on that one thing by doing 10 things. And so I'm aware that I have ADD. Actually, it's like ADHD, all caps, underlined, right? But I'm aware of it, and I've learned how to manage it so that I can get things done. And I, I'm actually, I get things done pretty fast. I get things done in the way that I had outlined to because I understand how ADHD works. I'm able to kind of attack back at it, right? So. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I think about how poorly I do when I compare myself to how other people are successful. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and I think about the like, I, I feel like if the you shoulds leak in, then it's kind of yeah. harder for me. Yeah. Um, and not that my way always works, but um, but it it is interesting to spend more time trying to understand where our strengths are to double down on. You know, um, I can't remember if you were on the San Diego trip with me with Paul Allen, the guy who was kind of that evangelist for the strengths finder stuff for Gallup that's now spun off and started his own version working with them. Uh -huh. Like, I feel like that guy, same thing. Like he, he owns his strengths so hard and then he hires for the rest. You know, like I, I was asking him to do some certain project. Hey, do you want to do this project with us? And he was like, he was like, well, to tell you the truth, Jess, I would be great at starting that. And then I would suck at, fi I would suck at finishing it. So I don't think I'm the right person <laughs> on our team if we were going to do something like that. But it was like, the thing about it, there was no self blame when he said it. It was yeah. just like, it was just an identification. It wasn't like a, and I should be able to finish things like that or something. It was just like, <laughs> he knew himself, he knew what he was interested in. And it's kind of like the, you know, Michael Jordan made a lot of money playing basketball, not baseball. Why don't we all figure out what our basketball is, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, knowing what you're not good at is just as much of a strength as knowing what you're good at, right? There's, man, I have so many weaknesses, you know, and I'm aware of them and I'm okay with them because I have strengths and I know what I have to offer. And I think that it took me a long time to be okay with that, you know, because you want to be great at everything. I'm not great at everything, but I'm super good at these five things. And I know that. And so if that's what I have to offer, I'm, I'm down, I'm in, you know, and then I will partner with people that can complement my strengths. And um, I'm very grateful for my business partners. Um, we do not have the same strengths in, in any way. We, we couldn't be more opposite. And we get along really great kind of as a result, right? And I'm very grateful for that. And when we look at like who we're adding to our team, if we duplicate personalities, we're doing everyone a disservice. Right? Um, and so that's something we think about as we build our team is that we're as committed, as interested, as dedicated to the end goal as any member of the team, but we approach it in different ways. Like we have a new member of our team who's, you know, I. <laughs> was super nervous about this project he was about to deliver. And I'm like, oh, you're not doing it the way I would do it. And he's like, I know, I know. And when he delivered it, I was like, oh, man, that was way better, <laughs> you know, and has been very successful that way. And it just comes back to the fact that don't do things the same way. And that's totally okay. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about another another aspect that I'm interested in of, of your approach to things, at least as I observe it. Like, you, wherever you show up, there's a, there's a party, like you're going to oh have boy. fun no matter what you're doing. <laughs> right. And you are like, you are genuinely interested in people and that relationship aspect and, and in having fun and it makes it kind of magnetic. You know, when you think about other folks who are like that, when you think about people who you think have similar strengths, who's somebody else that you feel like does that well, or someone, someone that you look up to as far as building relationships or making everything a party. <laughs> um that's a great question um i could i could drop so many names uh justin bolton 
Mike Fisher. Yeah, so give us a couple examples. What does Justin do? What does Mike do? They're just always smiling and laughing. Um, they look you in the eye. They listen to you. Um, and like if you were to ask them to get up on stage and do comedy, they, they probably wouldn't crush it. But they're so interested in you that they can, you know, take your third word and, and turn it into a routine, you know. And um, I, I just enjoy talking to people like that. I just admire their ability to to see you and, you know, yeah. do you want to pick one and either tell us a story or give us some specifics or <laughs> yes. Are and you, are you allowed to, to tell stories on the air? <laughs> These kind of stories? <laughs> I hope so. Well, this one uh, will greatly embarrass myself, but uh, I'll never forget it. And so Justin in many ways pulls the worst and the best out of me, but usually the worst. <laughs> and so we were at um, reunion two or two or three years ago. I think it was three years ago. And um, the people in front of us were talking about CrossFit and, you know, their clean eating habits and stuff. And it is great, but we couldn't help. There were a couple of friends of ours and we're like, oh, yeah, uh, CrossFit and burpees and, you know, cleans and all this stuff. And we were both joking and we're like, let's do some freaking burpees right now. And so we both dropped to do burpees. And as I drop, I, my hands are coming to the ground and my feet are kicking out. And this server is walking by at the worst <laughs> opportune moment. And I horse kicked this poor woman into the air. She, she goes horizontal. The cheese and the tortillas are in the air floating. And we all just drop. And there was close to 140 people watching this happen. And, <laughs> oh, my gosh, this poor woman. She gets up and she's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, I horse kicked you. <laughs> But Justin and I were having so much fun leading up to that moment that we were trying to tease these people in line about their CrossFit lifestyle. And uh, yeah, I horse kicked a server at the Montage Resort. <laughs> and uh, I saw her like six more times that day and we we were able to laugh it off. And I was I went to management and apologized. I was like, oh my gosh, what can I do for her? And they're like, don't worry about it. And she sort of pulled me aside. She's like, seriously, honey? She's like, you're a bit of a goof, but I get it. I'm like, <laughs> a bit of a goof. Yeah, I almost murdered you. <laughs> but, well, you couldn't have done it at a nicer place, right? That's right. That's right. And yeah, it was hilarious. It it, it was embarrassing, but um, Justin like, pulls a really fun side out of me. And again, like he just starts conversation, looks you in the eye and is like, man, how are you? And you know he means it, you know? And so you tell him and then you have fun. Well, maybe that's a good, maybe that's a good question for, for, for the last one here as we close down. Um, thinking about somebody else who you feel like is m more likely to put relationships over transactions or put relationships over money, who, who, why don't we go for one more story of, of somebody that you feel like has set an example for you for that? That's a great question. Um, I immediately think of Jacob Haney. Jacob is the best at this. He, um, he, call, he actually has a Santa Claus complex. Um, he pays very careful attention to the conversation that he has with you. Um, I can't tell you how many books, random books that have shown up at my door or random lunch invites or, I mean, you, you name it. Um, he, he pays such careful attention to the conversation you have and it's his best strength. And he's not like an, like a super extroverted guy. He's actually very quiet and meek. Um, but he is extremely serious about his relationship with you. And I have never forgotten that. He was my mentor coming into Corporate Alliance. Um, we've tried 100 ways to try to figure out a merge, but I think we both agree with like having our own ship. But love working with him. But I just love his approach with people. He thinks about you. And so even when he speaks to you, um, he responds slowly because he is considering the quality of his response. And he behaves that way when he considers the quality of his relationship with you. And I dig the crap out of that. <laughs> I love it. Well, everybody, uh, go check out artandwaragency.com. See what these guys have done. And uh, Matt, thanks for making time for us. Thank you, brother. Love it. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, my name is Logan Wilkes and I'm the CEO of Corporate Alliance. A few years ago, I moved to San Diego to build a new market for us there. The biggest deterrent I had to success was I didn't know a soul. 
I often thought to myself, if I just had a thriving network or influence, this would go a hundred times faster. To be honest with you, I had never felt so alone in my life because A, I didn't have an influence and B, I didn't know anyone that was going through the same thing that I was. If you have ever felt like this and you are looking to grow your influence, join us at one of our upcoming events. You can check us out at corporatealliance.net and request an invite to one of our upcoming experiences.